What's up, everybody? PG Braun here, president of Blackstone Labs, and we are shooting Project Freak episode. Who knows? At this point, we're over an hour late, and it's all my fault. I've been talking this whole entire time, and hopefully, I didn't sabotage his entire prep and have him waste the glycogen that he had stored up for this workout. So because of that, we're going to do a much, much different workout than we would normally do. That's actually a lie, but we are going to do a much different workout. So we're training chest, and we do a lot of heavy incline barbell work, uh, a lot of heavy presses. Now, we are going to be pressing a lot today, but I'm going to completely throw some different stuff at them simply because I want to focus on change. Anytime where you change up your routine, your body gets a little shock. It doesn't like know what's going on. and It's like, hey, I've been doing something else for a little while now, and now you're making me do this, and you adapt. And that is the key to success in bodybuilding, in, in weight training is adaptation. Your body has to adapt to the different workload, to the different stresses, and through that adapt adaptation, you get better. So, um, we are gonna start with a pre-core version of the incline press, and I'm gonna make him go very, very heavy on there, and then instead of doing normal barbell presses like he does, we're gonna do a variation on the Smith machine that I think you guys are gonna like a lot, and I'm gonna have him do some uh, heavy, uh, heavy uh, incline dumbbell presses. And then I'm gonna have him do some cool supersets with incline dumbbell flies and some good old fashioned barbell bench press. But since he was a football player and those guys are used to just repping out 225, I'm gonna have him just rep out 225. And then we'll do some sort of finisher at the end just to keep that volume going. We're getting closer to the actual aggressive diet for the freak, right, right now we're still focusing on him getting bigger. You're gonna see when I start putting the camera on him, he's actually leaner with the added size. And uh, we're gonna blast some chest, so let's get it on. So, well, I would do really wide, and then I would do closer too. Okay. And the one that you feel like you're gonna be stronger on is what I think you should do for the heavier stuff. like that too. So really yeah. And now we're just warming up. Now this particular pre-core machine is set up much different than the hammer strength machine, although it looks to the untrained eye like they're the same thing. So on this particular machine, your elbows are kind of forced a little bit lower. And you'll see that my elbows are, are all the way down. So it's almost like more of an arcing motion up. Now, as far as functionality goes in life, there's probably way more situations where you would be pushing in an upward motion like that, especially if you play sports. A lot of things you're doing in football, whether you're a lineman coming up into somebody's pads where you'd want to be explosive like that. But to truly stimulate the packs the way we want to, on this particular machine, he's going to have to have his elbows exaggerated up. So here, he's got more flexibility than I am, but you can see I'm trying to actually move my elbows up like this rather than having them down. And, and stay with the elbows up like this, not down. Now by doing this, we're gonna open the pack up a lot more, get more stretch through the top. You're gonna to feel it right through your collarbone, but this is gonna stimulate that muscle to fire a lot better. We got the, what we call these legion presses. Want him to be as strong as possible for when he's sending out all those legion emails to the 700 of you that want constant email responses every day. You might sense, you may sense a little bit of, of sarcasm in my voice, but I will tell you, Josh is, is working very, very hard on the Legion, but he's also training really hard and eating a lot lately, and he's put on size. Trying, trying to put on a little bit of so size. So I felt like, why not, why not make him look bigger by putting him in a video with Dan? <laughs> <laughs> Massive. Uh, but he is considerably bigger since he's been eating and, and training more. And um, everybody right now in Blackstone is in a very good zone. We got a bunch of guys competing. I am not competing, but I've been training more like when I was competing, with the exception of my shoulder injuries. Um, everybody, <laughs> except for him, uh, was eating a, 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 the bodybuilder style of, of dieting, going through uh, their preps for the shows. Somehow the current actually stays leaner than most of the guys that competed without dieting. Not but synaholic. one thing that's good is that um, he can keep up with the pace that I'm gonna push the freak at. And if you're training with a partner, I've said this in other videos, your only rest period should be when your partner is going. Like right now, this talking that I'm doing, slowing them down, this is not what you want. Where you're obviously making the videos instructional. Your partner goes, you go, and you go back and forth. No other downtime from that. Yes. 
You don't know until you try. Push, push, push. You got another one. Come on. Come on. Up, 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 up. Good. It's hard to figure out where to spot on this one, too. Yeah, you're, you're, only real, you're only option really wide out. Your only option is all the way out here, and it's hard, to, it's hard for me to do much Pull. for you guys. Yeah. One, two, Come on. Good. 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 Come on. Good. Good. Nice. Easy. Good. Come on. Good. Push, 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 push. There you go. All right, so we have six plates on here now. This is a lot of weight. And when you're doing something like a hammer strength or this pre core machine, it's okay to go real heavy on this. Now, the reason I say that is, of course you can still get hurt, but you're not having to worry about really stabilizing anything. You're just pushing against the machine. The machine is guiding your form. So you're gonna stimulate that, that muscle really deeply. Um, if there's anything that I think it's okay to really max out, it is a machine or something controlled on a hammer strength pre-core like this. When you're going max out on free weights, barbells, there's a lot that can go wrong. If, as soon as your biomechanics change, there's a lot that can go wrong. So that's not the place to do that. Of course, in competition, the bench press, the squat, the deadlift, those core moves are being maxed out, but there are also a lot of injuries based around people maxing out like that. So if you're trying to be a bodybuilder, you're trying to build your physique, and you're, you're looking at uh, longevity, you really don't need to be maxing out. I get asked that all the time, like, how often should I max out? A lot of the young, the young guys max out at every workout, then I talk to guys that are like, oh, I max out every four weeks. I mean, you're really not getting anything out of maxing out when you're trying to just build your muscles. Maybe psychologically, you can think to yourself afterwards, okay, well, I maxed out 50 pounds more than last time. I can use more weight on my working sets, but you should be pushing yourself to failure on most of your higher up sets anyway, and figuring out those things as you go along. Ooh. 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 Come on. Three, two, one. Good. Come on. Good. Good. Come on. Push, 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 push. Good. You got another one. Come on. Push, 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 push. Do one more. Come on. Up. Nice. Good. More than I expected. Yeah. I don't know if a silverback can beat a freak. <laughs> Normally, I would have him now start repping out on this. That's typical protocol for me. I like to flush the muscle afterwards or not, because I still want him focusing on actually just moving more heavier weights for now. We're gonna move on to the next exercise. All right, guys, this is a exercise that I learned a very, very long time ago. It's something that I used to see with uh, the DC, the dog crap training, which we brought up today. Um, something that I experimented with many, many years ago. I think it's always good to try different things. This is a particular exercise that's got different names. The one that I liked the most for it was the Widowmaker. And um, basically what it is, is no matter what kind of fancy name you want to give it, you're taking a very exaggerated 
hand grip on this Smith machine. This is something that you would really never be able to do with a barbell because it's just such an exaggerated grip. So even at the start now, I'm in almost like a fly stretch. And you're gonna come down, you're gonna set the machine up on a slight incline. We're at about a 30% incline. And you're gonna press from your neck. So you see, I'm, I'm opened all the way up and I'm coming up in here from my neck, okay? So we're gonna make sure the Dane is set in the right place. This has to be set up perfectly. You can keep those scapula pinched back and you're pressing up to extension. You're gonna feel a lot of pull through your chest. You do not want to be aggressive on your negative on this one. This has gotta be real controlled. You're gonna feel that stretch the whole way and then coming back up. Now what's really neat about this exercise is you're gonna feel this stretch and pull all through here. And this is a great way to really exaggerate stimulating the upper chest more and more and more. A lot of people will tell you, oh, you can't, you can't uh, focus on one spot and build it. That is, in layman's sense, correct, but you can stimulate the area through just changing your range of motion and changing the way that you do a normal exercise and then making it something weird like this, and you will feel it more there. And if you're feeling it there, the muscle's working. So that's what we're gonna focus on now, because I've never seen anyone that was too big up here. One more. Three more. Two more. Definitely why they call it the Widowmaker. Yep. <laughs> Good. Come on. Good. Come on. Good. Spotters, make sure you never let anyone get stuck on any exercise, but particularly something like this where you're all the way opened up, shoulders are externally rotated, there's a lot that can go wrong. I hate. And I know they're not doing it on purpose, but I hate when I see young kids in the gym just making their friend die on the bench press, screaming, come on, don't give up, don't give up, and the kid's just, just stuck. You should never, ever get stuck. As soon as you're stuck, that's where you're, you're, ba you're basically decreasing all chance of any real growth at that point and increasing chance of injury by probably 100%. So do not let your friend, your training partner, or even some stranger in the gym that asks you for help ever get stuck. Good. Come on. Good. 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 Come on. Good. 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 Give me two more. One more. Good. There you go. All right, so now we are going to do an incline dumbbell press, and earlier in the workout I talked about adaptation. Well, we have to adapt to our environment. So we're in a gym where the dumbbells go up to 100 pounds, and he is somebody that can lift more than 100 pounds very easily. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at 100 pounds, and we're gonna go to failure. And we're gonna do that three times with very short rest periods. Now, a lot of, a lot of people I've noticed um, have very varying ranges of their sets and reps. And I think that is good, but I think that as far as the actual amount of sets that you do, it's not so many of like, oh, I do six sets of this, or I do two sets of this. It should be what you're actually putting into those sets. So if you're gonna go to failure, to, to true muscular failure, I feel that three at the max four sets is all you need on that exercise. Now, if you're somebody that's telling me you're doing eight sets or seven sets, I find it hard to believe that you're going to failure on all those sets. Now, maybe you, you, you are, but I would hope that for the rest of your workout, you're really cutting back on that stuff. So we're gonna do three sets of the incline dumbbell press, and he's gonna go to failure on each set with very short rest periods. 
Good. 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 Come on. Good. Keep going. Good. Swag. Come on. Come on. Come on, you got more. Keep going. Keep going. Good. Another one. Come on. Push. Push, 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 push. push. Good job. Good. seeing now it's impossible to go to true, true failure like here. that and maintain the amount of reps that, that we started out with so you see that we dropped down uh you know, josh started really heavy but dan has dropped his reps down to a 50 percent decrease because i gave him no reps so when you go to true true failure guys that's what's going to happen you're not going to have the power anymore to keep pushing like that come on maximum effort Good. 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 Come on. Good. Another one. Come on. Cinnamon balls. Another one. Come on. Push, 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 push. Good job. Very good. Good. I can't even do, do that right now. It's going to be hard. So I'm glad that we're doing this, though, because I can actually see all the fibers in your chest coming all the way out. Yeah. It's a good time to be doing this. I'm just having them warm up with this because we've been doing all these other exercises. I want them to see how it actually feels first. We're going to superset the incline dumbbell fly, which is going to be more of the primary exercise here, with the flat barbell press, which is not really something you really would see people supersetting all the time, but you can superset anything you want. What I'm going to have them do is go with a shorter range of motion on here, so it's going to be not your typical touching your chest all the way to full lockout. We're, we're really focused more on just keeping the tension on. Now, you guys have seen in the very first chest workout we did, which I think was the first video we ever did, he did 225 on the incline at, at his, on his last set for 50 reps, which is insane. Now, everyone is stronger on the flat than they are on the incline. But you're gonna see the big difference between what he can do with 225 now after a superset plus all the other work that we did. It would be insane to try to push more than 225 on exercise at this point. You're just gonna be risking hurting your shoulders and things like that. We're really focused now on flushing that blood into the muscle. Are there other exercises that I could do that I think would possibly be better than what we're doing? Maybe. But for the sake of this workout and what we've done so far, I think these exercises make sense because they're so different than everything else that we've done. Good. 
So when you're doing any kind of fly exercise, you see he's really opening it up, okay? So when you do that, you should actually be lifting your chest the way he is to expand your rib cage as much as possible. When you don't do that, you're letting your delts kind of control the motion. You're opening your chest up to increase the stretch. This exercise is greatly about the stretch. We're going 10 to 12 reps, perfect form, wanting to really, really squeeze the contraction. Now we come into reps. Come on. Good. Good. Just wrap them out. Good. 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 Come on. Good. Come on. Come on. Come on. Keep going. Come on. Give me one more. Good. <laughs> My chest is cash. We're almost done. I'm good. <laughs> I'm almost good. Dude, I did like three and then like. A bunch of like quarter reps. There's no way I'm getting too much out of this. Your side chest. Oh, you're all pumped up. Front of the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, look thick right in here. Yeah. yeah. Super. Super. Good. 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 Come on. Two more. Strict form. Squeeze it. Ah. Squeeze over here. Ah, whatever you do. Three, two, one. Good. Come on. Keep it going. Keep going. Keep going. Just move it. Come on. Good. Come on. Here we go. All the way up now. Good. That's failure. That's real failure. You just have the veins coming out now. You don't usually have those. Squeeze hard. Your muscles are hard as well. Great. Come on. Good. 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 Come on. Last seven of these, man. Do one more. Squeeze it real hard. Good. We're gonna go down to 135 and do full reps with 135, really squeezing the contraction hard. Okay. Come on. Good. Good. Come on. Good. Keep going. Keep going. Come on. Come on. Just move it. One more. I'm gonna go 135. Full reps. Contract these hard. Come on. Here we go. Good. Full contraction at the top. Squeeze it hard. Come on. Squeeze. Come on. Full contraction of the top. Squeeze. 
Another one. Oh. Ah. This is real hard. Oh, God. That's how you finish the muscle. <laughs> Did we just finish with 135 on the bench press? Don't ever let anyone tell you that you can't finish with something like this. A lot of people do finishers, which is fine. We all have used that term before, but you can finish with any exercise. The muscle doesn't know that you're doing cable crossovers or fly or bench press. It just knows that it can't perform anymore. Good. 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 Bending all the way over, like kind of like how Dennis Wolf does. Then you're just showing all the crazy shoulder shoulder like this. Now you start leaning all the way forward. Yeah, because now, now when you show that more, it looks better. Now you're doing your hands That's freaky. <sighs> she like, Whoo. when did you do legs last? Monday. Monday. Yeah, chest looks great right now. Let's do the hand spot. I have a little wider stance with your leg. Right, hit it. Push in more. There you go. Turn the black. Last one. You're, you're, you're leaning about, about a little bit of a loss. You're leaning. Good. 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 Don't tell me your leg is cramping after all the blood's in your chest. My leg's cramping. <laughs> you alright? Yeah. yeah. Alright, no more posing. He needs some knowledge. <laughs> so do I. I guess that's a wrap. Oh yeah, I should wrap it up, shouldn't I? Yeah. I'm so focused on Cineholic that I didn't want to wrap up the video. <laughs> We've been here for a while, I'm very hungry. Um, so some, not outside the box, but outside the norm for his training, for how I have his training design stuff today, which is good. He's gonna be sore, he's gonna go back into the primary stuff that I have him doing, and he's gonna bounce back really well from all of this. Next time I think that you see a video with the freak, he's gonna be dieting. So. Let's see, because we're nine weeks out from where we're supposed to be. This one won't go out to the following week. Yeah, so you guys are going to start seeing more now dieting down versions of the freak. Now, what's cool about him is he's in such good condition to start that I believe that he can still grow into this show. And we're going to document the changes in his diet, everything else, different supplements that he's doing as we get closer to the show. But realistically, this is as fat as he'll be right now, which you can see he's not fat at all. It's probably 7-8% body fat. So um, very excited to see what he can do. I believe that he can be on stage um, in the 240s for sure. And who knows, maybe he can be on stage at 250. We're not going to worry about a number on the scale. Evan Centipani, when he did his national championship, was 244. And he was a freak at 244. He was flat. And um, I remember I, I stayed in his room with him. Just kept telling him, eat more, eat more, and he, he, even he was like, I feel like I'm, I'm still kind of flat. And I was like, just just double your carbs, you know, and, and as he ate more, it wasn't until about a day later that he was truly filled out all the way, but he beat guys that were 25, 30 pounds bigger than him because his 244 was a damn impressive 244. Now he obviously competes much heavier than that, but he can't get too caught up on the number on the scale. I just like having it in my head just as the person that's guiding along the way of knowing what he looks like at different weights. Next year when we do this, the look is gonna be completely different at different weights. For now, I have a, a vision in my head of him being on the stage somewhere in the mid 240s, maybe even 250, uh, but we'll see. We'll see how he grows into the show. Right now he's in the 260s uh, and he's solid. So that's Chest, I'm PG Braun, Project Freak. Peace out, buddy.